Okay, bro. Since last time we talk politics, do uh, <laughs> Wow, man. Were you surprised by how all out the gong, you know, accusing the guy of not only, I mean, he didn't even say pulveronic. He said, Drag addict, yung president yeah. natin. Tapos nagbumura mo na siya, tapos sabi niya, yung military AFP, I call on you, like, grabe, di ba? Except walang pumatol sa kanya. But, but that was crazy, right? He went like, forget about guns blazing, he went like bazooka blazing. I mean, weren't you surprised by how crazy the Duterte went? I mean, what is your sense with all of this? Well, um, right now, I think everyone looks at Duterte as a crazy person. I don't know, okay, not everyone. He still has a significant following that still believes every word he says, which is weird. Uh, harap-harapan, nagsisinungaling siya sa kanyang sariling mga followers. Harap-harapan, he gaslights them like crazy and yet they still believe him. Every word he says, which is weird. But it's getting smaller and smaller. Uh, I'm telling you, a lot of people that used to believe in Duterte do not anymore, especially when he went against Marcos. So there, the tide has turned. Ngayon, the problem lang is, when you have an ex-president that's speaking the way he does, with all the threats he's making, these are legal, uh, these are uh, against the law. Yeah, I mean, yung mga yeah, yeah, I mean like insurrection. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. What I'm surprised with is that why is the government not going after him? Yun lang. So this is where I see that in reality, honestly, I think um, BBM is... Um, I think he's... Uh, he's too kind? He's too no, kind? No, I think he's afraid. Uh, he's too timid. That's what you're uh, he's saying. Tim yeah, sure. Timid. He's timid. Like, uh, perfect example. He was in front of the interviewer. The interviewer literally said, why are you laughing? He was just like, oh, uh, it's like muckering all these things. He couldn't even speak properly. Natalagang natalagang. Na Alamano Yeah, so yun ang problem lang kay BBM. Um, he w I never looked at him talaga naman as a very um strong person. Um, I honestly, you know, I have my doubts talaga about the 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 elections. I have my very legitimate, you know, questions about that election. But nonetheless, this is the system we we're with, and that's. Well, who we're with, I don't have a major problem with him. I just want, sana lang na wag tayong papander to uh, an ex-president that thinks they can get away with murder, pretty much. And they're getting away with murder because the current administration is not doing enough to be able to show the Filipino people that everyone is equal in the eyes of the law. No one is above the law. Because right now, nakikita natin that there's somebody above the law because the current administration doesn't have either the balls or like you said, maybe just too timid or maybe it's the non-confrontational nature of Filipinos na wag na lang natin patulan kahit na ganun Hayaan na... Hayaan mo na, matanda na yan. Matanda na, si Raul na yan. Hayaan mo na, oo. Pero they, they, that causes a lot of damage. But yeah. there were a lot of backroom dealings that happened. Because after Duterte did all those things, talk telling him he's a drug addict, suddenly nag-180. Wala akong sinabing drug addict yan. And wala, wala, let's protect the Philippines. I want Philippines to be all together. Whoa, and at the same time, bigla na lang, uy, ICC not coming in na daw. Whoa, may mga parang backroom dealing sa ata nangyari dito. It, it doesn't look like backroom because it's so obvious that there's stuff going right. inside. I mean, it, it's they're not even subtle about it, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. As long as it's not subtle at all, that's the problem. But then again, at some point, for me, I always say BBM has to make the decision. I mean, yep. the ICC thing, he cannot dance around it forever. And this is what comes up in my other discussion. I mean, if he doesn't go after the other side, based on legitimate you know, criminal charges, and they're going to come back later yeah. on. I mean, after midterms, it's all about 2028. And who's leading yep. in the surveys? At least one of them is Sara Duterte. So... That's my point. That timidity could come to uh, cost him later on and cost everyone because I think there's a sea change between Marcos and Duterte. Not that Marcos is embodiment of great leadership or progressive leadership. I still have a lot of issues with accountability, justice, so on and so forth. Um, but iba parine. I mean, at least we yeah. still have a democratic space. I mean, I, I don't agree that back in the day during the time Digong. My goodness, every time I come and say something, death threats, attack, everything. Yeah. Right. So at this now, major. Whew, I mean, it's not Sweden, it's not, you know, it's right. not Libya, but at least it's not, I don't know, Narcos, Colombia field, right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, Right now, um, uh, the political climate is much better than it was six years ago. Uh, but but um, he needs to step up, and I hope he does. I And I think he should for his own political survival. Because, remember, he's trying to groom family members to be part of the to, to be part of the system and not only that 
if once he steps down as president, and let's say the Duterte's come back, oh, trust me, they're vindictive. We've seen that. What do you think is going to happen to BBM and his family? They might not give him the favors that he got the last time. So yun ang nakikita ko pwede mangyari. That's why if I were him, man, I, I know, let's play, play this Game of Thrones and play it well. Um, yun nga, it's, uh, my sense is the guy knows what's going on and what he needs to do. It's just a question of wh- when he'll do it. My worry is ito mga foreign travels niya is his way of postponing the inevitable. Right. right? <clears throat> Like travel, I I feel like he's he's that's his way of escaping it. Like Waldo, yeah. na lang ako, Astoria, na lang ako, mag, I, and yeah. that's my worry. That these foreign trips are just giving an excuse not to make the tough decisions, right? And mm. my worry is he doesn't also have the right guy. Wala siyang bongo, wala siyang operator, because you need an enforcer, right? Uh, yeah. You, well, said, the president is a symbolic figurehead, whatever, but he needs someone there who'll enforce, right? The the kind oh, of theory. No? Well, right? Godfather has to have a conciliary. Well, he he at one point at least had uh, Martin Romaldes. No, uh, Martin Romaldes is still there. Because Martin Romaldes is out there himself, right? In a sense that he wants to run for president, for higher office. Right. So he's in the ring. Eh? What you need is a conciliary in the shadows. Yeah. Doing, you know what I'm saying, right? Right. Martin is too much in the ring. I, you, you need someone in the shadows. You know that. Let's be honest. In, in, in Philippine politics nowadays, you need an operator. Yeah. Who fights yeah, the good yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You fights the good fight, and you know what? I'm going to say, good. See, Ronald Liamas, na lang yung operator na just kidding. <laughs> oh my god. But you need that because Digong had uh bongo. I mean, Digong himself was a bog, right? He's not gonna do the everyday, you know, yeah. uh, enforcement. You need someone dynamic, strong, young, even uh, yeah. to do that, or someone with military background, military connection, considering all of the coup plots. But I like it. I like it. I think this sets a tone for a very last short episode because hey, there's no way we can talk about Duterte without discussing Kiboloy. So I want to get your, your point of view because remember, uh, we started our discussion today on Women's, International Women's Day. And, and uh, you know, as far as Riza Ontiveros is concerned, and I think we really have to talk about them, she's doing everything she's doing. Uh, especially for for minorities, oppressed people, and especially for women, you mga na abuso, mga na victim, or allegedly. So let's talk about it in the last part. This is also our way of you know, uh, you know, showing solidarity with with strong women leaders, and also with all of those unsung heroes and women who's who have been abused and victimized, and hopefully they will find their voice and also see justice. Salamat, bro. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much.